All right, too much screen time has been linked to ADHD symptoms in teens, according to a new study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Researchers tracked the media habits of 2,500 teenagers for two years, and they found teens who used digital media the most were twice as likely to develop new symptoms of ADHD. And for more, I'm joined now by writer Alex Salkiever. He's the co-author of Your Happiness Was Hacked, Why Tech is Winning the Battle to Control Your Brain and How to to fight back. Alex, thanks a lot for joining us, and I think I'm more excited to talk to you than probably some parents who are watching now because they have a lot of questions. The first one for you, in your book you write about the addictive nature of technology. Are you surprised by these findings here? I'm not at all surprised really because the products have been designed to fracture our attention as much as possible to keep us coming back, almost like we're hitting a slot machine in a casino, frankly. So I think that in general, you'll see more and more of these type of findings coming back over time. So what should parents do to limit their children's screen time? I think that's like probably the biggest challenge of this generation here. It, and that's really a blunt instrument. I mean, to just to say no screen time or as much screen time as you want probably isn't a real way to deal with this because look at our lives. We have email, we have to check texts. We all need screen time. That's just part of life. In general, we try to ask people to take a more contextual look at how their kids are using different apps whether it's destructive, whether they become unresponsive, whether they become negative, or some kids, they're just fine playing Fortnite for a half hour and then shutting it off. All right, uh, I want to switch topics, and I'm going to take you all over the place if you no don't problem. mind. Uh, Facebook has been under fire, of course, for the spread of fake news. Uh, in a recent interview with Recode, uh, CEO Mark Zuckerberg defended his company's decision not to ban the far-right website Infowars, uh, despite its tendency to spread conspiracy theories. What do you make of that decision? So I personally think that the decision is uh, the wrong one. I think that when news sites specifically spread false information and do so under the guise of it being the truth with no pretense of sarcasm or uh, parody like The Onion, mm -hmm. I think that that's a real problem for society. And I think that it's, the onus should be on someone like Mark to either get rid of that or perhaps to put warning signs on that. And that goes to both sides. There can also be sites on the left that are, this, that are of a similar nature. And the same interview, uh, Zuckerberg said it was clear that Russians tried to interfere with the 2016 election using Facebook. How could Russians or other similar groups uh, use the social network as a tool for manipulation? I mean, you see the stories, uh, mm -hmm. and the second that you see it, you're like, oh, my God, and you start reading it, and you start to believe it before you, you know, check your sources. I don't think everybody as a journalist in has to check their sources before they report it. So how can you sort of keep these groups from manipulating readers and viewers? It's a really difficult problem. And the first part of why it is so difficult is you have to understand Facebook, Twitter, all these other systems are essentially algorithms. They're not controlled by people. And so if groups like the group in Russia that, uh, that perpetrated some of these acts is able to essentially hack the system to understand how to tweak it to make it do what it wants in terms of creating filter bubbles or creating uh, news cycles that on fake news that people actually believe what happens you have to understand that this is a machine So from that we have to back out of it and say okay How much of the control should we give to the machine and how much do we need to actually start people having to weigh in on? And right, you do see him actually hiring people to moderate the news. All right a final question for you The European Union fined Google five billion dollars. That's a lot of money there a lot of money. Uh, for antitrust violations Are we gonna see more regulation like this in the future? I think it's inevitable frankly uh, and the reason why is that most of these large tech companies have been largely unaccountable mm -hmm. for quite some time. And they haven't necessarily always been good actors. In certain circumstances, they've done a really good job. I mean, things like Facebook sharing pictures, it's wonderful. But in other instances, when, for example, they're tracking our data or allowing in organizations like Russia, like Cambridge Analytica, to access it without telling us, that should be regulated and it should be really stepped out. Any tips for adults who just can't put their phones down? I want to go back to that whole screen idea. So that's a real problem. Um, so what I generally tell people to do is try to take a pause when you're in the middle of something and ask yourself, is this something you really want to do? Does it make you happy? And after you're done with it, are you glad that you spent those five minutes doing whatever it is? And if or it's five an hour, hours. Five right? hours looking at cat videos, exactly. So. <laughs> All right. Alex Salkiever, uh, co-author of Your Happiness Was Hacked. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for your expertise and advice. Thank you, DeMarco. All right.